I'm Kevin Wallace, and if you're working with Cisco Unified Communications Manager, you need to know what's new in version 9. So in this video, I want to show you what I consider to be one of the 9 most important changes in version 9. Why is version 9 so important? Well, it's the version that you need to know for the new CCA Collaboration Certification. So version 9, it's going to be highly relevant for the next few years. And also, for the real world, it has some serious enhancements to prior versions. One of those enhancements is the way that Locations Call Admission Control works. Check out this video demonstration of the new Locations feature, then stick around after the video and I'll tell you how to access another video covering yet another version 9 enhancement. One of the biggest changes we see in Communications Manager version 9 is the change to Locations. Locations has been around for a long time in Communications Manager. It's a CAC, a CAC, a Call Admission Control Mechanism, to make sure that we don't consume too much bandwidth across the IP WAN. But the way Locations were traditionally implemented really wasn't perfect. If you had a topology like this, locations did not do a great job. You see, the assumption with traditional locations was that we had a hub and spoke topology where every site had one connection and that one connection went right back to HQ. So for example, if we had a call going on between Louisville and Lexington, as we see on screen, there's a 256K link between those two sites, but locations would not know about that link. It only knew about the links going directly between HQ, our hub none location, and the other sites. So this 256K link, it was totally ignored. And there wasn't a great way to specify an accurate amount of bandwidth that would allow us to use that link and not oversubscribe a link that does go back up to HQ. Oh, and something else, take a look at Tampa. Tampa goes through Orlando to get back to the HQ site. But HQ is assuming Tampa is just another spoke in this hub and spoke topology, meaning that when a phone from Tampa places a call, communications manager would deduct that bandwidth amount from the Tampa link, but not from the Orlando link. You see the Tampa call, it's going through Orlando. It's taking bandwidth from the Orlando link, but that bandwidth would not be deducted from the Orlando link with traditional locations. Things got a lot better with RSVP enabled locations. Take our example of Louisville and Lexington again. Since there is that 256K link between those sites, with RSVP enabled locations, we could use that. We would have routers at each of these sites configured as RSVP agents. And then when we placed a call between these two sites, communications manager would tell the routers, okay guys, set up an RSVP reservation between yourselves. If you can reserve enough bandwidth for the call, then yes, the call can go through. You can use that direct link and I won't deduct that bandwidth from these spokes going back up to HQ. But that still didn't solve the problem of having these LEAF sites like Tampa, which has to go through Orlando and use some of Orlando's bandwidth to get back to HQ. Well now, in Communications Manager version 9, we have Enhanced Location CAC. Now we can go into Communications Manager and we can accurately model our entire topology like we see here. Not only can we specify bandwidth amounts for each of these links, we can assign a weighting to each of these links. This weighting can be in the range of 0 through 100. We can make this weighting up ourselves. It doesn't have to be based on bandwidth. You can use your own weight to influence call routing, but this works a lot like a routing protocol. For example, take a look at the link from HQ to Lexington. There's a direct link, but that link has a weight of 40. It would be more efficient based on these weightings to go from HQ to Louisville to Lexington. We've got a weight of 10 to go to Louisville and then an additional weight of 20 to go to Lexington. Well, if you add those up, that's 30. That would be a better path and that's what becomes the effective path with enhanced location CAC. And in order for this magic to work, we have to be running a service on our communication manager servers. And this service is called the LBM, the Location Bandwidth Manager. Consider these three communication manager servers in a cluster. We could run this LBM service on all of the servers and they could communicate with one another and they could have full knowledge of the topology. However, if we for some reason did not want to run this LBM service on one or more of our servers, we wouldn't have to we could just dedicate a subset of servers in our cluster to run the LBM service. What we could do is put those servers in an LBM group and we could have the remaining servers like the server here on the right, it could just point 
to that LBM group, and it would not have to run the LBM service. And this is within a cluster, but we could actually use locations-based CAC between clusters. What we could have is an LBM hub group in each of our clusters. For example, here we have cluster A and cluster B. Each cluster contains a couple of communication manager servers, and they're each running the LBM service. But notice that I've designated one, and we could have more, but I've designated one server in each cluster as belonging to an LBM hub group. A hub group is used to communicate with a hub group in another cluster. This is the way that we can interconnect clusters. We're going to do this over a SIP trunk. These members of an LBM hub group, they're going to form a full mesh of connectivity with all the other members of LBM hub groups and other clusters so that cluster A, not only can it have a detailed location topology for its cluster, it can learn about the topology over in cluster B. And this is going to allow us to make optimal call writing decisions even between clusters. Let's go out to the live interface right now and see how to set up Enhanced Location CAC. Let's begin our configuration by going under System and under Location Info and select Location. I've already got a couple of additional locations created. I've got one created for BR1 and for Music on Hold and for a Gatekeeper Trunk. But let's take a look at the other locations. These are built in. Built into Communications Manager version 9, we have Hub None, Phantom, and Shadow. What are these locations? Well, Hub None, this by default, is where the servers reside. And normally, if I have an HQ site, instead of creating an additional location for that site, I'll just use Hub None as that site. And devices at the HQ site, they're going to be part of the Hub None location. Now, Phantom, that's a location that's somewhat like Hub None because it has unlimited audio and video bandwidth, but its intent is to be used with intercluster trunks running H.323 or SIP when we're reaching over to a cluster that supports an older version of locations. It doesn't support the enhanced locations CAC that version 9 supports. If we're running version 9 and we want to point over to another cluster, we're going to be using the shadow location. This is used for intercluster enhanced location CAC. In fact, a SIP intercluster trunk has to be assigned to this location in order to be able to send location information information to a remote cluster. And this location has no links to other locations. It's sort of a standalone location. It has unlimited bandwidth for audio and video. Let's now add some locations to match the topology that we were looking at earlier. Let's add a location for Orlando to begin with. We'll say Orlando. And I'll say that between Orlando and Hub None, there's a link with I'll say 256k of audio bandwidth. I want to give it a weighting, and this is a number that we make up. I'm going to give this a weighting of 20. And notice that if we're doing video calls, we can specify the audio bandwidth in addition to the video bandwidth and immersive video bandwidth. What's the difference between video bandwidth and immersive video bandwidth? Well, this video bandwidth, this is if we're using just a regular video-enabled endpoint. Maybe it's a Cisco 9900 series phone. Maybe it's some sort of a Jabber client that has video built in. But immersive video bandwidth, that's where we're talking about telepresence. But in our example, we're just concerned with audio bandwidth. Let's save that change. And even though Orlando does connect to another location, there is another link. It's a link to Tampa. We haven't created Tampa yet. So let's add another location. And let's call this location Tampa. And we're going to say that Tampa has a connection to Orlando. And it's going to have a weighting of 40. And I'll say the audio bandwidth is 128K. And we'll save that. So now we see that we are connecting from Tampa to Orlando. And we've already said that Orlando connects into Hub None. We're starting to educate Communications Manager about this topology. Let's create another location. Let's create one for Louisville. And I'll say that Louisville has a connection to Hub None with a weighting of 10 and an audio bandwidth of 512K. Let's save that. Let's add one more location. Let's add one for Lexington. And Lexington has a couple of links. It has a link to Hub None. We're saying it has a weight of 40 and an audio bandwidth of 128. I'll save that. But it has an additional link. It's got a link going to Louisville. And that link has a weight of 20. And it has an audio bandwidth of 256 save that. 
Now we've said that Lexington has a couple of links to different locations, and we've specified a weighting and a bandwidth for each of those links. Now that we've done this, assuming I'm running the LBM service on all of my servers, if we have a call going between Hub None and Lexington, it should not use that direct link to Lexington because it has a higher weighting. It should go through Louisville. And I'll show you in just a moment how we can look at our topology and look at our effective path. That's going to be done under our serviceability screen. But before we go to the serviceability screen, let me show you how we can create the LBM groups and the LBM hub groups that we talked about. We go under System, Location Info, and we can select LBM or Location Bandwidth Manager Group. Let's do a Find. I don't have any created by default, but I can add a new one. I could give it a name, I could add a member, and I could specify a standby member. And again, the reason we might want to do this is if we were not running the LBM service on all of our servers in our cluster, we could instead just run LBM on a subset of the servers, add those servers to this LBM group, then go into a server that was not running the LBM service. Let's pretend that this server is not running the LBM service. What I could do is point it to a location bandwidth manager group that I had previously created. That would be its way of participating in enhanced locations CAC. If I wanted to reach out to a different cluster under system location info, we could say LBM hub group and we don't have any by default, but I could add one. I could give a name and a description, and I could add members. But in our example, we're keeping things fairly simple. We're keeping things within a cluster, and we're assuming that everybody's running the LBM service. Let's take a look at our effective path. Let's go up to Navigation, go into Cisco Unified Serviceability, click on Go, and under Tools, in version 9, we've got a new set of Locations tools. Let's take a look at our topology. We'll do a Find and we can see our different locations. Let's take a look at our Hub None location, and we can see that Hub None has a connection to Orlando and to Louisville and to Lexington. Those are the ones that we just added. What about Tampa? If we look at Tampa, Tampa only has a connection to Orlando, and Lexington should have a couple of connections, one to Hub None and one to Louisville. And based on this topology that Communications Manager now knows about, and based on the weightings that we've assigned, we should be able to select a best path based on those weightings. Let's go under Tools, Locations, and look at Effective Path. And these drop-down menus allow us to select a couple of locations, and we can see what is the effective path between those locations. Let's say I'm going between Hub None and Lexington. Now, we know there are two ways of getting there. We could go directly to Lexington over that link but that link had a weight of 40. If I went to Louisville and then over to Lexington, that would only be a total weight of 30. That's the path we should take. Let's see if that's the case. Let's do a find, and we see that, yes, we can go from Hub None to Lexington with a total weight of 30. But if we look at the detailed path that we're taking that gives us that weight of 30, we see that we go to Louisville over a link that has a weight of 10, and then we go from Louisville to Lexington over a length that has a weight of 20, giving us that cumulative weight of 30. And this is a basic example of how locations-based CAC has come a long way since the days when it assumed that every other site was connected hub and spoke up to the hub site. Now we can educate Communications Manager about an exact topology. Did you enjoy that video on locations? Personally, I've been teaching Communications Manager courses since Call Manager version 3.0, and I'm blown away with what Cisco's done with locations. And I've got another version 9 video for you. It covers URI dialing. That's one of the topics on the new CCIA Collaboration Lab. To get access to that video, just go over to cucm9.oneexamamonth.com and enter your email. You're going to get immediate access to the video. I'll see you there.